thought I'd make a quick video tonight on, um, you know, being original and coming up with your own crafts and your own ideas and even um, gathering a, a book where you can put your spells in to share with, um, you know, your kids and relatives that are into magic and, you know, they love making oils and different types, blending different types of herbs as well as just um you know they just love magic overall so you know when you when you love magic you're gonna love everything that comes along with it my you know from my aunts and my grandmothers those that practice um their their recipes were much more original and you know they had to work with what they have they didn't have any shops there was no stores you know that would have any type of things that they would need and that would tell them you know this is for magic they would have to figure out what they needed using stuff from the earth and um a lot of herbs that they grew right in their backyard as well as certain fruits and vegetables and a lot of the spells that i did learn are from stories that my mother would tell me and each story that she would tell me you know, would have some kind of spell in it that she remembers growing up watching um, my aunt do. Actually, which is her aunt, so it would be my great aunt, as well as my grandmother. My grandmother telling me stories, and a lot of the stuff that they tell me is just so interesting. It's like, you know, a lot of people, they don't do that type of stuff anymore, or they don't know how to do it. And, you know, you have to get in, um, you have to call upon your ancestors you have to call upon the spirits to come forth and to help you, to guide you, to show you different types of things that you can put together so that you can be more creative and, you know, you can get the results that you need as well. Because a lot of it, you know, a lot of you guys that have your ancestors um, and you, you have your ancestor altars and you call upon them, they will guide you into the direction that you need for certain spells. So a lot of your grandparents, you know, and family members that have practiced magic, you may have not even had the chance to get stories from them because you never knew of it. Because I remember when I first started doing magic at 17, um, there was no one to go to. I would, I would be nervous to go into the shops. And when I went into the shops, there was an older Spanish lady that would tell me how to do everything. And at that particular time, I was interested in love stuff. I remember the first video I did was uh, Apple Spell. It was <laughs> it was crazy then because I was I guess I felt desperate to do this spell. But now that I think about it, it wasn't it it just didn't make any sense. Uh, like to me, honestly, it didn't make any sense. But at that moment, because I didn't know anything at all, it was you know it was to me it was interesting. And if it was so simple for me to just go speak to my mother and, and grandmother and um, call up some aunts, then I would have did that as well and gotten my information straight from them instead of, you know, because online, um, back then, of course, there was, um, spells that, you know, you, you figured they would work because they're posted. So you would never question them. But now that I look back at them, it's like, you know, it's just, they didn't make any sense to me at all. So having that original, um, spell, from someone that's been doing it for years I, I think i think those are all great ideas i love trying to be original i love trying to make my own spells as well and um it's i don't even think i ever purchase any kind of books i have one book but it's a book for um prayers and that'll be the only book that i ever purchase because i honestly don't feel the need to read up on anyone's um opinions when it comes to certain spells because everyone is going to do things differently so i can give you a spell and you may uh twist it and turn it up a bit to get something out of it you know so when i get a spell or spells that i have learned or what i have learned myself um i try to i try to put me into my spell as much as possible and that's what i recommend for you guys to do as well you know, if you have your grandma's spell, if you're using your mother's spell, if you're using any kind of ancestor spells, those are the best spells to use. But it's hard to really, you know, get the items they use. And a lot of times they use no candles at all. Because, you know, my grandmother told me they would burn certain herbs. And um, it would, you know, the fire would be high. And that would be basically like their candle. 
And if they didn't make candles, it was handmade candles. So back then, you you have a lot a lot more richness going into your spells. So when I do spells now, um, you know I do burn an incense and I, and I try to let the spirits guide me to um, to a, a a good spell and um, so I can get some good results as well and blending different herbs together. I love herbs. I'm, I have become obsessed with herbs and oils and you know. Every Thursday, I make my oils. I make a new recipe, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting my herbs together. I'm trying to figure out what's best, what will go best with this oil, the smell, the scent, and it's just everything flows together. So every Thursday, I make about three or four different oils. So I have a really good collection now of different oils that I really like, and you know, I know on that day I burn an incense, and most of the time, you guys will see me burn an incense. It will be either the charcoal or it would be a self lighting incense and um you know I, I crush it up i make it myself with the herbs and then i'll add some um maco or I'll add some copal and then i'll add a little bit of saltpeter saltpeter can ruin your incense if you add too much so just a little bit is good but um if i'm not doing that then i usually do another blend i'm going to show you guys really quick the blend that i do okay so I usually use the charcoal so you'll have the charcoal let me put some more light on okay so I don't know if you guys see this alright so you'll have the charcoal that'll be one thing that I do and then another thing that I like to do for purification is the gum arabic arabic gum arabic this is really good so I'll place this on here but a smaller piece this is kind of big so after I light this up, I use the, um, this is the lighter that I use. So I light this, I'll place it into the pot, and then once it starts turning red, and it gets a little white on top, then I'll place the gum arabic on top, then I'll also add in some, um, dragon's blood. So if you guys don't use dragon's blood, or you don't know what the use of it is, you can, you can use it on that. So I'll add some of that on there, as well as the, um, frankincense tears, and I like the way the frankincense tears. They, they, this oil will help me uh, mentally um, purify my space as well as my mind and help me to get good ideas. And then I'll add in a piece of white sage. Just a small piece will go on here. This is kind of big, but I'll add a small piece on there. And then what I do most of the time is um, the same camphor that I showed you guys to put in with the anel to make the, um, you know, to cleanse the home and the bowl. Then I, I crush it up and then you add a small piece on there as well. And that's a great incense for purification and spiritually and mentally you get yourself into your work. So if you're, you're trying to get some work done and you don't know how to get it done, it's just so much going on. I recommend, I highly recommend you guys doing this. Now I do have a personal incense blend that I use as well to call upon the good spirits and you know, um, certain deities and saints to just bring forth their presence especially if i'm working a um, candle spell and i'm using certain deities then i will want some good energy and, and a good flow of positive vibes flowing through the home so i would use um you can use star energy or energy seed i will add marshmallow leaves which is good to bring the um the spirits good welcoming spirits you know no evil spirits or nothing like that it brings welcome welcoming spirits then i'll add some mugwort which is good for, um, you know, some spirits and stuff like that. And then I add some blessed thistle along with the mullen leaves. Now, some people use the mullen leaves to call upon dark forces. But I'm not calling upon any dark forces. I'm calling upon spirits, period. The mullen leaves can be called upon spirits, but some people will use them to summon the darker ones. Now, alongside with the blessed thistle, which is pr pr protects your home and purifies and keeps evil away, this will kind of knock out the evilness that you know is the or the intent that goes in it for the mullen leaves even though in no way do i intend to call upon any kind of dark forces you sometimes don't know what kind of realms you're going to open when you light certain incense and you say certain prayers you know you open in a door and you don't know what is going to come through or what can sneakily come through behind a good spirit you know and the blessed soul will knock that out so it'll kind of weigh in on each other um, the mullen leaves, you do not need to combine them. You can just have that blend alone and you can crush, you know, use the, use the motor and pestle and you can put them right on top of this. And when I do this, 
I won't add the sage, but what I will add is the dragon's blood, then I'll add the frankincense, and then I'll add some camphor, and then I'll blend all of these up together. And then I love adding the um, the gum arabic. It's good for purification, like I told you guys, and just spiritualness alone. It's, it's a real good blend. So, you know, you guys could try this out as well. And you don't really need any kind of mackle powder into it. They, they're all going to burn good on the charcoal, you know. Unless it's like you're making a self light in a sense, then you would have to blend certain different things to get that light ignited. And just a little dab of saltpeter. You know, saltpeter is kind of weird because if you use too much, you, you're gonna it's going to basically burn. You're going to have your incense on fire. So you have to be really careful with that. But I really think that this is a really good blend if you want to call upon the, sp the saints and the spirits and even your ancestors. And um, I'm also going to be making a video on... Um, for All Saints Day, so Day of the Dead, Halloween, you know, whatever you guys call it, depending on your religion, um, and what you follow, Wiccan, Pagan, Hoodoo, Voodoo, you have different names to it, but, um, for the All Saints Day, um, Day of the Dead in Mexico, they celebrate this day, making fun, mocking death, and letting them know they not, they do not fear her, and, you know, she's weak, and she's skinny, how can she carry a body, they, they have these type of masks and stuff like this, colored, and they're really pretty, and this is a candle, this is a, um, a flameless candle, so it's all wax, and then, of course, you know, it has, you put a battery underneath, and it's really cute. I picked up a few skulls like a couple of weeks ago when I went out shopping and um, I'm going to show you guys how you can set up your day of the dead slash all saints slash Halloween altar to also welcome in your ancestors. And then I'll show you guys how you can set up a quick ancestor altar as well for those of you that are interested in doing it, you know, setting up, um, putting out their favorite um, drinks that they like. Uh, certain, you know, sometimes they prefer alcohol and, you know, a glass of water is fine as well. So, um, tobacco products as well as their favorite candies and pictures. You know, you want to welcome them in. You want to remind them that you still think of them as well as hell bank notes. I have a bunch of those too as well and I usually put those out. And, you know, I'll show you guys how to do that very soon. But, you know, I just had a, a quick idea to just make this video to just let you guys know what I you know what I feel about certain spells that I do and certain things that I do show you trying to be as original as possible counts but if you can get the job done you get it done and and actually that's all that matters at the end of the days but you know there's nothing like grandma's spells those are the best spells you know your grandmothers her grandmothers great great grandmothers you know for you to be able to get those spells and hold on to them and pass them down to your kids I think that's a great idea so as always you know comment below like you guys do and um like subscribe and stay blessed guys